Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live, and today I'm going to show you how I made a fun card with the um, Warmest Heart Stamp Set Bundle, which is from the new mini catalog from Stampin' Up. And I'm just trying to get set up so I'm hopefully somewhat straight here on the screen for you, and uh, you're not looking all crazily crooked at everything. Um, so anyway, yeah, just uh, there we go. I think we, I think I finally got it kind of straight. <laughs> so all right. So if you are joining today, I appreciate you being here. Have a, um, you know, just. I appreciate having you join along. Okay, maybe I should start over. <laughs> I appreciate you being here um, and hope that you're having a wonderful day. So, all right, so let's get going. This is the card we're making. It's just a super simple little cute card, birthday card. Um, I always kind of struggle with cards for guys, and so I thought this one could kind of work for either a guy or a lady, um, just anyone who kind of likes the outdoors and that sort of thing. So that's why I went with this one. So, Hey, Karen and Pam and Danette and Carol, I appreciate you all being here. Um, so this is what we're making today. This is the stamp set bundle. It is a photopolymer set. Um, so it's one of those that is clear and easy to stamp with, uh, she says, before she gets going on anything. So, hey, Tracy, uh, thanks. for. I'm glad you're here live. Um, so... Uh, like I said, it's it's clear, photopolymer, easy to stamp with, easy for the two-step stamping that some of this requires. Um, I did a little embossing and some coloring, and I'll show you how I did all that in just a second. So, hey, Mary Ruth and Jane and Margaret, uh, or uh, I guess Margie, I appreciate you being here, and uh, Carol from Hot South Carolina, and Stephanie as well. So thanks for joining. Um, oh, and I got this die set upside down. So the Warmest Heart um, dies coordinate with the Warmest Heart stamp set, and this is the die that cuts out the stamped uh, little thermos here, and then there's a thermos that you can um, die cut here and create your own. There are some different lids for it. Um, there, the open images here you can use to cut out uh, some of the sentiments and uh, the stamped images and all those fun little things in the stamp set. This is one that's just a little background, well, not a background, A you can layer it over the top of this and it creates kind of a pattern, um, as well as this one, same thing, you can layer it over the top and it creates a little pattern on your thermos. So it's just a cute little set, um, some fun images in it, and yeah, you all need to get it. <laughs> so, um, hey, Susan from Green Bay and Pamela's here. And I, did, I didn't say hi to Ramona and Stephanie and um, Debbie G. So I appreciate you all joining. So, uh, all right. So this is the stamp set bundle we're going to be playing with today. Let me set a few things aside here. Uh, a couple other things that I did use on this. The sentiment, um, there's not a birthday sentiment in the Warmest Heart stamp set. So I grabbed one. I wanted something a little smaller and straight and Let's Go Shopping had one that fit perfectly. And on top of it, there's a little die here that, um, did I point to the right? A little die that cuts out the happy birthday sentiment here as well. So, yep, always love that, coordinating uh, stamps and dies. And then um, the last die set that I used on here, I kind of used a few, um, is the Stylish Shapes dies. And I used the largest circle die to cut out the little background um, panel that I embossed uh, underneath the little thermoses. So this is another die set that I used on uh, my projects today, the Let's Go Shopping and the Stylish Shapes are both in the annual catalog. The uh, Warmest Heart stamp set bundle is actually in the upcoming mini catalog. So that starts September 6th. If you are not a demonstrator, you can order it um, beginning September 6th. Or if you join as a demonstrator right now, you can add this to your pre-order or, or to your starter kit, and then you can pre-order anything else from the upcoming catalog that you might want once you join as a demonstrator. So you get your hands on things a little early, so definitely a good time to join. Let me know if you have questions about that. We'd be happy to have you come join us. Um, last thing that I used on this card front is the Timber 3D embossing folder. I did emboss, and I'm not sure how well you can see it on here. Um, I'll kind of move it around a little, but I did emboss the crumb cake panel, um, the little die cut circle. So use that as well. All right. So hey, Judy and uh, Darlene, I am not in Las Vegas yet. I will be heading there on Thursday morning, bright and early. So I'll be around for another day or so. All right. A um, couple things before we get going. Online exclusives. When you're out doing your shopping, um, make sure you're peeking at the online exclusives in the Stampin' Up! online store. Um, there are some holiday related items in there now, uh, some general items. So yeah, it's good time. Always go check, see what's available, see what's back in stock. Um, so yeah, go check those out in the online store. Uh, Stampin' Up! does have their kits collection on sale, all of the kits uh, for the month of August. So they're up to 30% off. Some are 10%, some are 20%, some are 30% off. So depending on the kit. And um, 
the kits are kind of available while supplies last. Some of them will be restocked, some of them will not. So you just kind of have to, if it's there and says currently unavailable, that means it should be coming back into stock at some point. Um, if it's there, you can grab it. If it's gone completely from the store, then it is gone completely forever. So, all right, so that's how the kits collection works. And then last thing I wanted to remind you of is we're getting down there. We're down to the last, what, nine or 10 days of August, so you need to get your bonus days coupons redeemed during the month of August. Uh, the ones that you earned in July, the five dollar off coupons, make sure you're getting them redeemed because I hate it when people miss out on getting free stuff. So, all right, let's get going on the card. I see um, Gwen joined us as well, so thanks for hopping in. I appreciate you being here. Okay, so I did a little bit of um, chopping and things ahead of time. So hey, Connie, thanks for joining. This is paper from the Glorious Gingham 6x6 Designer Series Paper Pack, and it's the Pretty Peacock um, design with the gingham. And it's two-sided paper, and it's an awesome pack. If you don't have it, just get it, because it's you, you'll want it, trust me. <laughs> so hey, Sally. Um, so this, I'm gonna put the, the larger print gingham up. And if I, um, I don't know, I was feeling a little lazy and didn't wanna have to measure. So I just did it as a whole panel of um, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth inches. Um, if I wanted to conserve a little on the designer paper and wasn't feeling lazy, I could figure out the inch wise difference between the two pieces of designer paper that I'm getting ready to put on here. But I just was feeling kind of lazy and I didn't measure it. So. Um, this is uh, adhering it to a piece of basic white cardstock that measures about four by five and a quarter. And then I've got a little piece of the inked botanicals of all colors. <laughs> I wanted something that coordinated with the pretty peacock and I thought Lost Lagoon worked perfectly with it. So I've got a little piece that measures about one and three quarters, three fourths of an inch tall and about uh, three and seven eighths wide. So I'm just gonna cover the bottom of this panel with that. And again, if you can take five and an eighth and subtract out uh, one and three quarters, uh, I don't know, it's like two and five eighths or something. I can't remember what the actual measurement is <laughs> that, that this top piece could be cut down to if you wanted to not have to layer designer paper one on top of the other. But like I said, I was feeling a little lazy, so I figured I'd just do this because it's easy. So no math involved. So, um, oh, thanks. I'm glad you're liking the colors. All right, next up, we have got a Pretty Peacock card base. My original card, I usually do the top fold on mine. So it's four and a quarter wide by 11 inches long and scored at five and a half. So it folds at the top. I know not everyone loves that fold of the card. So this one also works with your standard book fold card, uh, which is eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter down the middle. So either way, it's a half sheet of um, basic card stock, but I just cut mine long way instead of short way because I prefer that type of card base, but I know not everyone does. So you can take your pick. Um, and then I've got my Stampin' Dimensionals, which these again are my half Stampin' Dimensionals. And if you don't love them chopped in half, again, you get to pick. You can use the whole Stampin' Dimensionals if you like, um, or you can use the minis, whichever one you prefer. I like the half ones myself, so that's why I tend to use them. All right, just sticking that on the card front with the Stampin' Dimensionals. And then ahead of time, I cut a piece of crumb cake cardstock and I embossed it. So I cut this with the Stylish Shapes largest circle die and then embossed it with a Timber 3D embossing folder. So hopefully you can see that on screen. It's embossed a little bit. Um, just wanted to give it a little texture underneath my um, little thermoses. I almost called them mugs and I knew that was not the right term for it. Used a little stamp and seal and we're just gonna adhere this on. So hopefully get it straight and somewhat centered. All right. Next up, we're gonna do some stamping. So I'm gonna start, I think I'll start with a Pretty Peacock image here. So I've got Pretty Peacock cardstock, got the little thermos image from the Warmest Hearts stamp set, and then a Pretty Peacock ink. And we are gonna stamp the outline of the thermos image on here. All right, and then I'm gonna stamp this a few times and take some of the ink off and grab my chamois and clean it off because we're going to need this same stamp for our Versamark ink and I do not want to stick pretty peacock ink all over in the Versamark ink. Um, and then this is the kind of plaid look, um, I don't know, is it plaid? Yeah, probably plaid look uh, design that you can stamp, do the two-step stamping with the thermos and we're just going to ink that up as well in pretty peacock cardstock. And I'm going to try to get it lined up and hopefully fairly straight. 
it's a little challenging, I will tell you, um, looking through a device and trying to get it stamped in the right spot on my cardstock. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Since it's the background image, I'm calling it good. All right, so let's set that aside. Close up that ink pad. And then I think I will go ahead and do the die cutting on this one. So just gonna grab this little die from the Warmest Hearts uh, die set. And I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine, so I will be right back. Hey, Jackie, thanks for joining. There's the die cut. And I'll get that put back over here. And the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of um, heat embossing. We're actually gonna emboss two images. So I'm gonna stamp again. I'm gonna use the um, thermos image. And then I've also got this one that looks like a little, I don't know, kind of mountain sunset scene or sunrise scene, either way. And Gonna grab some Versamark ink and I'm gonna go ahead and just use my embossing buddy. This is in the um, embossing toolkit, I think is what it's called. Embossing something tools, tools and accessories. I don't know, I can't remember what it's called exactly. Um, so we're gonna do Versamark ink and ink it up really well. And then we're gonna stamp on Lost Lagoon cardstock. And then I'm also gonna ink up my little um, mountain scene image and stamp that on basic white cardstock. All right, set those aside and close up my Versamark before I end up with embossing powder all over in that. And then we're gonna grab white embossing powder from the basics embossing powders and we're just gonna sprinkle that over the top of the thermos image. I may need to re-sprinkle that. And then as well over the top of the little mountain scene image. I think I'm gonna redo the sprinkle a little more here See if I can get a little more to stick. There we go, that looks a little better on the thermos. And then I'm gonna close this up before I turn my heat tool on. And pull that over. I've got the Stampin' Up! heat tool here. There's a level one setting for drying. So if you're doing something like um, watercoloring or something like that, that um, takes a little longer to dry, you can set the level one setting and uh, hurry that process up a little bit. There's a level two setting that is for heat embossing. So that's what I'm doing today. So just giving it a second to heat up, um, get nice and warm before I go ahead and turn it towards the project. So hopefully I think we're probably getting close here. And then I'm gonna turn it towards my project here and just kind of move it around a little. There we go, it's starting to turn. Once it turns kind of that bright white and shiny, uh, then you know that it's done. You can just keep moving it around your, your image until you get all white and shiny. All right, there we go. Okay, and then once it's done, you wanna take the heat away because you can actually burn your embossing powder and I'm gonna do the same thing. It'll be a little harder to see this one turn on the white. Um, it just, I can see it here, but probably a little more difficult to see through the screen. Um, just want it to get kind of smooth and shiny. And then we turn it off set that aside and I'm going to give it a second to cool and just take a peek at it. Looks like I got it pretty well. All right, now I'm going to cut this one again. Actually, I'm going to color first. Let me grab some markers. Um, when I use heat embossing, I generally tend to pull just the regular Stampin' Right markers um, because the blends can actually kind of mix a little and interact with the, the um, embossing powder. So I tend to usually grab just regular Stampin' Right markers when I'm going to color on an embossed image. Oh, I got hair sticking on there. Yeek. All right, so I'm going to start. This is uh, Lemon Lolly. And I'm gonna color the sun and then a couple of the little rays here with that. Um, as I, I think I started to say the um, blends, kind of they can almost reactivate and mix together with your um, embossing powder if you aren't real careful when you color with them. And uh, since I tend to kind of sometimes make a little bit of a mess and color outside the lines, I usually try to stick with stamp and write markers, which are water-based and they don't interact with the embossing powder. So I usually stick with those when I'm coloring this type of an image. And then, yeah, so this is Daffodil Delight. 
Then the next color I'm gonna grab is Pool Party. And we're just slowly gonna start coloring in the little, kind of the mountain and the sky and the whatever the background images are. I didn't know exactly if it was sky or if it was mountains, but either way, did shades of blue on that. And then I'm gonna use Lost Lagoon for the next little section here. And again, it's okay if I color a little bit on the white lines. I'll show you once I get done how I kind of clean that up um, with just a soft cloth or a tissue or something. And then the last one, I've got Pretty Peacock, and we're just going to color that in the very bottom section. Doo -doo -doo, just kind of coloring around the little tree images. All right. And just kind of coloring across and making sure that hopefully I got all the spaces filled in here. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up for a second and as you can see, I kind of colored a little over on some of the lined images. So I'm just gonna take a tissue and kind of blot it and wipe carefully. And you should see most of the color is gonna pick right up off of there. Um, looks like the one tree down here in the corner, I might not have got quite enough embossing powder on. Uh, normally it turns a brighter white, but that's all right. It kind of looks a little more mountainy to me that way. So there we go. We've got our little colored image. We've got our thermos. I'm going to run these through the die cutting machine here. Um, so I'll be back in one second. So, hey, Robin, thanks for hopping in. No worries. And if I didn't say it, there is a little die. This little kind of curved die actually cuts out this image. So it's nice. That they've got coordinating dies for pretty much everything. Looks like I got both of them done here. So let me um, grab a little stamp and seal and we're gonna stick the two pieces together. So I'm just gonna take my little embossed image and we're just gonna stick it here right on the thermos. And if I called it a mug earlier, I keep catching myself and stopping myself from calling it a mug. I don't know why I have mug on the brain, but thermos is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I've got my other image that we stamped earlier, and I'm just gonna use a little stamp and seal on that one to adhere that to the card front. And I kinda want it up a little bit and tilt it off to the right-hand side. So I'm gonna take that, sort of stick it on here. And then I'm gonna grab some Stampin' Dimensionals to put the um, second little thermos on with. And again, just sticking a couple down the back. Whoop. Pick off the backings and I'll stick that to the card front. And again, just kind of tilting it to the left. I'm like, what hand is this left? Yeah, <laughs> tilting it a little to the left and putting it down a little lower. All right, next up, we've got the sentiment that, there we go, I gotta grab my Lost Lagoon cardstock back. And I'm gonna grab Pretty Peacock ink and I'm gonna get the markers out of the way before I have another unfortunate miss. Um, I've got the sentiment. Again, this comes from the Let's Go Shopping stamp set. And just gonna ink it with a little Pretty Peacock ink, stamp it here on the Lost Lagoon cardstock. And close that up. And then grab my Let's go shopping die set. And there is a die that coordinates with the happy birthday sentiment here. So I'm just gonna take this and again, run it through my die cutting machine. So I'll be right back. Um, no audio for you. I hope everybody else can hear. Uh, let me know if you can't. I don't know if there's anything I can fix over here, but I'll see what I can do. Hopefully it's working. my birthday die is wanting to not sit still. All right, there we are. Set that aside here, and then I'm going to grab some linen thread. Uh, you missed the set in the catalog. It's way, way in the back. All right, cool. I'm glad y'all can hear me. So, um, who converted who to half dimensionals? <laughs> 
All right, glad the auto is working for everybody. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, well, actually, technically, the very first person that I learned that from was my upline when I originally joined, and her name was Sandy McIver, and she was in Portland, Oregon, and at the time, I lived in Portland as well. And so I signed up under Sandy way back when. She was the one who showed me that trick, and then I have shared it since with a few people. So, um, yeah, I don't know who taught who for sure, but Sandy's the one who taught me. <laughs> So, all right, I've got linen thread and I'm tying a little bow here and I'm going to snip it off. But yeah, this, it is a cute little uh, stamp and die set. And like I said, they kind of stuffed it way in the back of the catalog. So I don't know they, they hid it a little. So you love the half ones. I know Karen, it's the best. It took me a minute to, to, you know, really get on board with it. And then once I did, I'm like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> To me, they work so much better. All right, just grabbing a little glue dot and it's gonna look kind of messy when I stick it on. Although I stuck it to my finger and not to where I wanted it to be. Um, just gonna stick it on here and then we're gonna cover it with the uh, sentiment anyway so nobody's gonna see the icky looking glue dot um, back behind, so. All right, so I see we've converted a few people. I'm happy to hear that. Because <laughs> I know originally when I started showing this, I actually had someone comment that they absolutely cringed and they hated it every time I cut the dimensionals in half. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> they work better that way. All right, so using some of my little half stamp of dimensionals, um, then I've got, you know, I've just, you know, I'm gonna use that to stick my sentiment on. Again, if you prefer the minis, you can certainly use the minis. I just like the half ones better. So, I don't know. I think the size is better and I like them to be a little longer. The minis are too small, I think. The, I like them to be longer and narrower. I don't know, I guess I'm weird. <laughs> So, all right, uh, last thing for the card front, um, I've got some rustic metallic adhesive back dots, and we're just gonna stick some of these around the card front here. Oh, and I'm gonna use my little take your pick tool since I was yakking about it in my last video and then didn't have it handy and hadn't shown anybody. Um, but yeah, the take your pick tool is, it's really nice for putting little embellishments like this on because you can kind of precisely place them. It makes it easier for lifting them off as well. So definitely kind of a nice little tool to have in your toolbox. And there's a putty end that is a refill on there and I'm almost, I'm kind of in need of it and I need to pull mine out. I have it, I just haven't replaced it yet. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, there's a little putty refill end. So when you use up all the gooey stuff inside it, you can get another one and refill it and um, go on your merry way with sticking your embellishments on that. So um, I know you, I always need smaller and longer stamp of dimensionals. I don't know why it's, I guess I use a lot of narrow sentiments. I don't know, I like them. So, all right, inside of the card, I kept it pretty simple and just did a piece that I trimmed off from the card front of the Pretty Peacock Designer Series paper. And I don't know, this is, it's about three quarters of an inch, I believe. I'm just trying to make sure I get it lined up fairly straight here. It's kind of hard for me to tell the white on white here. All right, and we're gonna stick that down. It may be closer to seven eighths of an inch, I don't know. It's somewhere around the three quarters point, but it was just the piece that I had that was trimmed away that was the perfect size, so I just grabbed it. And basic white cardstock, this is cut to four by five and a quarter. And then we're just gonna stick it on the inside of the card. There we go. And then fold it closed and do a quick crease with the bone folder. So there we go, that's it. Super quick and easy, and like I said, I think, I think this will work for a you know masculine card, feminine card, whatever you want to do with it. Um, there are some cute little images in here. If you want it to look a little more girly, um, there's some little flower images. Um, there's a cute little sun, so you can make it be for kids. There's a rainbow. There's another mountain image. So all sorts of fun things you can do with it. Um, just keep in mind the little technique of embossing and then coloring with your markers and super quick and easy and done. So, all right, let me know if you have questions about this. I will be um, posting all the details on my blog tomorrow and I will link up to it. All the cardstock cuts and everything will be out of my blog, so you can take a look there. And um, yeah, let me know if you have questions on anything. I will actually be gone. I'm going to be in Las Vegas uh, on Friday at a Stampin' Up! event, so I will not be going live. I will plan to be back live around 2 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday next week. Um, there's, I've got some family stuff going on, so 
that may change a little bit, but I will let you know and keep you up to date on what's happening and if there are any time changes to anything. So I will plan to see you next week, Tuesday, around 2 o'clock Eastern time. Until then, have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, take it easy. Everybody stay cool. I know some parts are going to be hot. Some parts are under, you know, got the, all sorts of crazy storms happening. So stay safe, stay cool. And school starts here tomorrow. So yay. <laughs> all right.